What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. Now when you first start out in this hobby, the amount of equipment you can get is absolutely mind blowing. And it can be quite difficult to figure out what you really need and what you can do without. So for this video, I've taken a look back and I've pulled out the top six pieces of equipment that I think would have made a real difference if I'd have known about them from day one. Let's check it out. First up is the Tunzi Algae Magnet, and I can't overstate how fantastic these are. Compared to the more common floating magnets, they absolutely blitz through algae, and in particular, the tough stuff that builds up if you leave your tank more than a few days. I love anything that makes life easier in this hobby, and this absolutely does that. At around £30, they're not especially cheap, but knowing what I know now, I'd happily pay £100 for this. The cheapest, easiest way to make your tank look awesome is to clean the glass regularly, it makes an absolute world of difference. And if you have a bad algae magnet, you won't clean your glass as often. Then you'll resort to reaching into your tank with a credit card once every month or so, and credit cards are far better used for funding your coral habit. Number five on my list is a coral dipping station. Now you should treat every coral you buy for pests, like Aquapora eating flatworms and Zoa eating nudibranchs. If you don't, you run the risk of introducing a pest that could eat all of your corals. But if you don't have a dedicated dipping station, you're more likely to skip the process, especially if you're in a rush. My setup costs of a 5 litre food container, a small power head and a toothbrush, all of which cost me less than £30. As it's small, it's easy to store in a convenient place and it won't need much water, so you don't need to worry about taking loads of water out of your display tank, which your auto top off will then replace with fresh water. Number four then is the most unusual item on my list, a tile drill bit. One thing you realise when you start buying corals, especially frags, is that it can be a bit of a pain in the butt to fix into your rock work. To combat that, you can drill numerous frag plug sized holes in your rocks before they go in the tank. Tile drill bits are much more sympathetic, so are less likely to break the rock in half. Your corals will then look much slicker sitting flush to the rock, they won't fall off, and it makes it much easier to mount them on vertical surfaces. And as a nice brucey bonus, when your corals grow off their frag plug, you can pull the frag plug out, replace it with a fresh one, and then sell the original coral. If you repeat the process when the coral grows back over the new frag plug, the coral will end up paying for itself many times over. And suddenly, £100 for a single zoa polyp doesn't sound quite so expensive. First on the podium then is the HANA Alkalinity Checker. In a reef tank, the single most important thing for you to test regularly is alkalinity. Problems with alk probably account for the majority of issues that we experience with stony corals, and it can deplete to dangerous levels very quickly. But testing anything two or three times a week can feel like a real chore, especially with the usual dripping style test kits. And that's where the HANA alkalinity checker makes such a big difference. It's so easy and quick to use that you can be done in less than 60 seconds. It also takes the guesswork out of reading what colour the result is, and that means you get a more accurate result which lets you make fine adjustments to your dosing solutions. And if you're a gadge nerd like me, you'll love the dork factor of a digital testing machine. The runner up on my list is a tank cover. My first tank was a beautiful rimless tank, much like the current Red Sea Reefer range. They look stunning and really draw the eye with no cover on. And you'll probably see plenty of rimless tanks in your local fish shop without a cover. In fact, in most of my videos, you'll see the tank behind me with no cover on it. But that is very much for show. I do have a cover and it goes straight back on my tank the second I finish filming. And I can guarantee if you don't have a cover, you'll find out the hard way that pretty much every fish available in the hobby is a flight risk. Especially top beginner fish like clownfish, gobies and wrasses. When I had my first tank, I came home to find a crispy goby sat on my carpet. And I saw both of my clownfish launch themselves over the top like a scene from a World War I movie. It was like the final scene from Blackadder Goes Forth, and it was equally as upsetting. Now there are plenty of options around, and Red Sea make an own brand cover for as little as £35. They look absolutely fine when they're in place, and after a while, you won't even notice it. And the number one piece of equipment I wish I had from the start is a reverse osmosis filter. When you first join the hobby, these can look pretty intimidating, but I want to demystify that today. Essentially, it's just a more advanced version of a Brita drinking water filter. It doesn't need any power, as it uses your mains water pressure to push water through its filters. All you need to do is connect it to your water system, turn the taps on, and it will start producing clean water. 
The most daunting part of these filters is installation. But it's one of those jobs that's so easy that once you've done it, you'll wonder why you were ever put off. And there are a million videos on YouTube that talk you through the process step by step. When you're setting up a tank, you should think of it as keeping water, not fish and corals. And filling your tank with pristine water lays the foundations for success. Most importantly, an RO filter gives you control over the quality of the water you produce. That's measured in TDS, or Total Dissolved Solids. Poor quality RO water is a really frequent cause of problems like algae and even coral mortality. Ask your local fish shop what level the stuff they sell is. If the answer is anything other than zero, walk away. One of my local fish shops told me they keep it anywhere between 20 and 80. And that's like filling your house with air straight from the highway. An RO filter will also pay for itself over time. A simple RODI filter will set you back less than £100, and if your tank is 200 litres or more, you'll probably spend more than that on day one if you fill it up with salt water bought from your local fish shop. There's also the convenience of being able to make as much new water as you want without leaving the house. So you can fill your freshwater reservoir and get ready for a water change at the drop of a hat. And as you build up confidence, you can upgrade your system to add a booster pump, which will make water quicker and will reduce the amount of wastewater you produce. Or additional DI, that's deionization pods, that will really polish your water even further and leave you with a totally pure environment for your new pets. So there you have it then. Those are my top six pieces of equipment that I wish I knew about right from the start. I'd love to hear about the great pieces of equipment you've discovered since you got in the hobby, so put them in the comment section below. And if you enjoy the video, as ever, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for future content. And in the meantime, check out some of my other videos. Until next time then, I have been The Reef Talk. Thank you, good night.